There are a lot of Flatpak subcommands, but many of them aren't really that useful in your day-to-day -day usage. Some of them are used for Flatpak development, some of them are used for weird edge cases we need to modify the way a Flatpak works and things like that. But if you are new to Linux or maybe just new to Flatpaks, let's just do a quick rundown of what's important and what you actually need to know about these commands. Now, let's say you want to install something, but you don't know what it's called inside a Flatpak. Now, a lot of people are going to suggest going over to the Flathub website and then using the search filter there. Let's say I wanted to install something like Spotify, for example. If we go to that page, there's this install button right here, which will let you download the Flatpak ref. I'll get back to what those are in just a moment. Or you can also go down a little bit and it'll show you the exact command you need to run. But maybe what you're installing isn't available on Flathub, and it's in some third-party repo that doesn't have a website listing everything that's available. Well, what you can do instead is use the search command inside a Flatpak. So if we go and run Flatpak search, and then pass in whatever our criteria is going to be. I know, for example, that if I search for com .obs project, that is going to show things related to the OBS project. And as we can see, we get these results here. Keep in mind that if your font size is too big, some of the information that might be useful is going to be cut off. So in those cases, you may want to zoom out a bit, and then you can actually see things like the application ID, which is always going to be fairly long. Now, you've probably noticed that every project in here has both a name. This is something human-readable, things like WebSocket plugin, Input Overlay plugin, OBS Studio, and things like that, and also an application ID. This would be something in long cases like, say, com.obsproject.studio.plugin.websocket. Sometimes it doesn't start with com, instead starts with org instead, but the structure of the application IDs aren't really that important for now. What is important, though, is the application ID is the most important part for installing an application. So let's say I want to install something like this GStreamer plugin here. What you might think you can do is flat pack install and then go G streamer. Make sure you have all of the capitalization, all of the spelling exactly like it should be, and then plug in. And what you're going to notice is that doesn't work. What you need to do is use the application ID. Now, it doesn't have to be the entire ID, but it has to be in the form of an application ID. So flat pack install. And then let's say com.obs project. And this is going to show me a couple of results. So we have Flathub system, Flathub beta system, Flathub user, and then Flathub beta user. So these are two separate repos I currently have available inside of Flatpak. I'll show you how to add those in just a bit. But there's also the system version and the user version. So if you do a system installation, it's going to install it for every single user whereas the user installation is just going to install it for your current user. And if you don't need it to be a system-wide application, it's usually better just to do a user install. So I'm going to choose Flathub user version, and then it's going to show me a bunch of extra results. This is every single flat pack that matches my original search criteria. So I'm going to say I want to install that GStreamer plugin that is on number two. Press enter again. Then it's going to show me what's going to be installed, including the package and any of the dependencies you might need to download. And confirming from there is going to get everything started. But maybe you don't want to see the user and the system installations. Maybe all you want to see is what is available for the user. So if we do dash dash user, that is only going to show user options. If we do likewise dash dash system, it is only going to show the system options. Another option you can take is installing from a local file. Those local files are those flat pack ref files like you can download in places like Flathub. So this is basically a pointer to where the flat pack is located, along with all of the information that you need to know to actually install it. So if we go and run flat pack, spell it correctly, flat pack install, and then pass in one that I've downloaded, so that would be this Spotify one, it's going to install in basically the exact same way as before. But it should also be noted that unless otherwise specified, most of the commands will run as system commands. As we can see with this, it was trying to do a system installation. But like with before, if we pass in dash dash user, 
then we can do a user installation instead. I'm not going to go over system and user for every single command, but keep in mind that almost all of them do have those options. So now that you've installed a flat pack, maybe you've just forgotten what the name is. Luckily, what you can do is run flat pack list, and this will tell you everything you currently have installed. The name, the application ID, the version, the branch, if that is important information, the origin, so where it actually came from, and then how it's actually installed, whether it's a system installation or a user installation. Now, I have a lot of things in here that are system installation, which probably shouldn't be, just because back when I first started using Flatpak, I didn't actually notice there was a difference. So I need to go back and actually fix those. Now that you know what things are called, let's actually run something. This is done with the flatpak run command and also the application ID. Let's say I want to run something like Helvum, for example. If we go and run org.pipewire.helvum, that is going to start the application. But let's say I don't want to write the entire thing out. Luckily, what you can do is actually tap complete it and it will show you things that match that result. So in this case, it's Helvum, let's go and run it, and then the application is going to start in just a moment. My system, sometimes flat pack's a little slow, but there we go. But you can actually skip that run command entirely and run it in an implicit fashion. If we just go and add the application ID directly into our terminal, so org.pipewire.helvum, that is also going to launch the application. At one point, that didn't actually happen, but nowadays, these have been added into your path and automatically will just run that for you. So now that we have our flat packs running, sometimes we need to update them. That is done with the flat pack update command. This is going to cycle through everything that needs an update and then prompt you to actually do that update. But you don't always have to download the updates. You can also do effectively what amounts to a package sync. If we pass in dash dash app stream, this is going to be like updating your package database like you do for something like Pac-Man and things like that. So once you are done with a project, let's say I no longer want Helvum installed, I probably want to go and uninstall it. This is done with the flat pack uninstall command, once again, passing in the application ID. At this point, this should probably be assumed, so from now on, I'm no longer going to mention it. In my case, I actually had two versions installed, the system and the user version, but if I want to get rid of everything, this can be done with the final option. In my case, though, I'm just going to get rid of the system version because I don't need two versions installed. But when you uninstall stuff, a lot of the time the dependencies aren't going to be uninstalled as well. So what you need to do there is go and run dash dash unused, and this will get rid of everything marked as a dependency that doesn't have a purpose to be on your system. In my case, I actually have a surprising amount of it. I'm going to say yes, get rid of all of it, and now we're good. We also have to talk about remotes. Remotes are basically repos of flat packs. The main one being Flathub, but there are also things like Flathub Beta and tons of third-party repos out there as well. Sometimes you'll have a project where it has a custom repo just for that project. So if we go and run flat pack remotes this will show us every remote that is currently available so let's pretend like i didn't have the flat hub beta repo there so what we would do is run flat pack remote dash add then give it a name the name is entirely up to what you want to call it i could call this i don't know uh we'll call it banana beta why not and then we go and pass in the link to where we can actually find that repo. If we go and press enter now, it's going to go and try to add that. Because this is a system repo, it is going to require root access to go and enter your password for that. And then it's going to get added. But let's say I no longer want that banana beta repo. This can be removed by running flatpak remote dash delete and then passing in that name. Make sure you spell it correctly. Why I picked banana, I have no idea. Go and run that. Because this is a system repo, it will require my password. User repos will not require that. As I said earlier, pass in dash dash user to go and make it a user repo. Now I may be wrong and someone feel free to correct me, but I don't believe right now there is a way to rename a remote. So if you want to go and rename it, you have to go and delete it and then re-add it. But 
hopefully at some point in the future that is going to change and there has been a open issue about this since 2018 but maybe you're curious what is available on certain remotes this can be done with the flatpak remote dash ls command and running it by itself is just going to list every single thing that flatpak currently knows about if you go and instead pass in a repo let's say i pass in flathub dash beta it is only going to show me things that are available in that now because i have both a system and a user version it is going to show both those options i'm going to say the user version and then i'll list them out one thing i didn't touch on earlier is with the flatpak search command it doesn't actually have a way to distinguish which repo you're actually searching in so this is going to search for everything i would like some extra option to say i want to search in the user version of flathub beta or the system version of flathub or anything else like that and lastly i want to briefly touch on permissions now permissions require an entire video just by themselves i might do that at some point in the future but if you don't know what you're doing, I would recommend just using FlatSeal. FlatSeal provides a graphical interface to go and set all your permissions, and it makes it really, really easy to do. But for now, if you want to go and mess with them, you can use the permission-show command, the permission-set command, the permission-remove command, and the permission-reset command when you inevitably make some sort of mistake. But while you're setting those permissions, I would recommend just going and looking at the Flatpak documentation on what all of them actually do. So now you know basically everything you need to know to start using Flatpaks. And maybe you get so interested in them, you want to start making them for yourselves. In which case, go and check out the Flatpak documentation. I'm certainly not the person to ask about that. And if you want to know more about the commands that we use today, or you want to know more about some of the other commands that are available, I recommend just going and checking out Flatpak-H or the Flatpak man pages. But hopefully, if you're new to Flatpaks, today's video helped you out. And if it did, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Libera Pay in the description down below. I've got, <laughs> I've got a podcast, Tag of a Tea. I've got gaming channel, Brother Ops and Plays. I'm out. Bye.